Cyberspace. My name is Garrett Mills and welcome to episode 6 in my PHP development tutorial series. Um, in this series we're going to kind of look at from start to finish each of the individual like skills required to start developing web applications in PHP. Um, if you haven't I recommend starting at the beginning of this series and working your way through to this point. Um, to do that, you can click the little I in the top right hand corner of this video, and it'll take you to a playlist that has all these videos. Um, but if you've done all that, in this episode, we're going to take a look at something exciting. We're going to start working with MySQL um, and database persistence. So, database persistence is the foundation of how web applications work because it's really not like if you're not going to store data somewhere it's not as important to run as much the stuff on the service like there's no reason for me to do all of um, so using our newsletter sign up form as an example there's no reason for me to set up the extra infrastructure to save these variables on a server and using PHP because everything we've done can in theory be done in JavaScript on the client side because there's nothing that we need to um, there's nothing that we really have done here that specifically requires it to be done on the server except that's where data storage comes in so you know how when you sign in to Gmail for example it remembers your name it remembers your login information it has your account picture all your settings and everything it's because those are stored in a database persistent storage on Google servers and then the web app can access that data and that is one of the um, biggest parts of a web app is being able to store persistent data from session to session without requiring it to be saved on the client and so that's what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to build on our um, newsletter subscription form little app we've got going here. And we're going to set it up so that it saves the submissions to a database. So the first thing we're going to need to do, obviously, is set up a database. So if you followed my tutorials for setting up your development environment in PHP on whatever operating system, if you haven't done that, you can click the little I in the top right hand corner. Um, you've already got a database software installed. So whether you installed Scotchbox or Exampt, they both have some sort of MySQL or MySQL server that is capable of um, handling web apps and storing data. And so we need to create a new database in that server. So I'm going to take a second to sort of explain the structure of it. So the way MySQL works is you've got a database server and that server hosts multiple databases so say a database for one web application, a database for a different application, a database for a third application so like each application gets its own database and then within each of those databases there are individual tables so for example for this newsletter application we're gonna make we will have a database for it and in that database will be a table that will store the first name, the last name, and the email of the entries and submissions of our form. And so in that table there are rows or entries. And those rows or entries are just the each individual submission, each individual set of data. So row one will have someone's first name, someone's last name, and someone's email. Row two will have someone else's. And you can use this predictable structure to search through a database um, in a predictable way. So I can say select all entries where the first name equals Garrett. And so that will look in the table for this app and it will look in the first name column and it will find all of the records where the first name equals Garrett. And so you can do a lot of um, sorting and retrieval of data very efficiently with a predicted structure. So to set up our database we're going to use a very very useful tool called PHP MyAdmin. So if you've got 
Examp installed, you've got this installed by default. If you've got Scotchbox installed, you've got this installed by default. So making sure that your development server started, if you type dev.local slash php my admin, you should get a page that either looks like this or you're going to get a login page. So uh, on Examp, which is what I'm using to run this development server, the default login is root as the username and it has no password which is fine for development purposes because we don't intend to use this database server for production in scotchbox you will have to log in but the username is root and the password is root so if you get a um, if you get a login page for PHP my admin just type root as the username and root as the password if you're using scotchbox or root as the username and leave the password field blank if you're using exam so this is the default PHP my admin interface. So what we're going to want to do is come over to the left and we see we have a list of all of our databases. So most of these are just utility databases that the server uses. We don't really want to delete those. What we do want to do is click new to create a new database and we're going to name it. So we're going to name it something for our application. So newsletter now we'll just name it newsletter that's fine and we'll hit create and it's done now it's going to ask you to create tables and things uh, which you can do through PHP my admin but we're also going to take a look at doing that in um, in the actual PHP code so we don't need to do that right now so one last thing we're going to do is we're going to create a user for this database specifically that way we don't have to use our root login so we're going to hit home we're going to hit user accounts and we can click add new user account so then we're going to set a username and then a password so just I'm just going to make it something easy since it's for development and then down here so if this were a production application you would be very specific about what permissions this user would be able to have for exactly what tables that way if the user account got compromised um, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt the rest of your data but since this is just a development environment it's a lot easier to just check all give it full permissions and whatnot um, but if you were to um, if you were to do this for production what you would do is you would create permissions based on a table so you would set the table and then you would say I only want them to be able to select insert update delete and file data they don't need to create tables they don't need to administrate the server you would just select specifically what you want them to do but since again this is a development user it's fine so we're gonna hit go and there we go we have our user so now that that's done we can jump back over to PHP storm and we're ready to get started so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up the additional processing for this file for submissions so in our index.php file which is where we're handling all the processing for our form that our users will fill out if you remember it's um, this form when they fill it out right now when we're filling it out when we submit it we just get sent to a thank you page which is all fine and good but we need to store that data so that when it actually comes time to send these email newsletters out we have the names and addresses so we have this set up in such a way that it verifies the submissions, it validates the um, data to make sure that it is only a first name, it's only a last name, and it is an actual email address. And then it calls this function handler, and so when we get to here we know that these are right. We don't have to check these anymore. And so here, all we're doing is we're setting a session variable and we're redirecting them to a thank you page. But up here, we need to store the data before we redirect to them. So we still want to redirect them to the thank you page, but before we do that, we just want to save the data. So up here a little ways, at the very top, 
we're going to create the database connection. So in PHP, um, we're going to use a thing called PDO for database connections. And it's sort of like an object oriented connection kind of, but basically your connection is stored in a variable and then to interface with the server, you use that connection, that PDO connection to execute SQL commands. And we'll talk a little bit more that, about that later. So right now we're going to create the connection. So we have a variable CONN equals new PDO, which is our database connection. And then in here, we're gonna have some string of database information. So we have the um, driver, so we're using MySQL. Next, we're gonna have the database server. which we're gonna leave in a variable for now that'll allow us to set it dynamically further up. We're gonna have a semicolon separating that. And we're gonna have the database name, which we set. So next we're gonna have the username and password. So now we just set these variables up here. So server address. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find out the IP address for your network. That way if this is being used um, from a different computer or something that it doesn't get messed up. So this is from my network at home. This is the IP address of the server running um, running my application. So if you're using Examp, this is obviously going to just be localhost, so referring to the current machine. If you're using Scotchbox, you're going to want to use the address of the Scotchbox from the local machine. In my case, I need to use this. So, there's our server address. Next, we need to set the database name. So, we set that to newsletter earlier. Then we have the username. Which I think is right. And then we set the password. Now, I just use password because I broke every rule of internet dumb, but that's okay because it's just for development, testing, local, the, obviously in a deployment environment your MySQL password would be very strong. So there we go. We've got our connection. However, there's one last thing we want to do. If this fails, we don't want it just completely destroying the web page and um, spitting up a bunch of garbage errors for the user. So we need to put it inside of a try catch like we did um, like we did in our video about error handling. And if you haven't seen the video about error handling, I recommend you watch it. You can click the I in the top right hand corner to go watch that. And we're gonna look for a specific kind of error. We're gonna look for a PDO exception, which is a sort of exception specific to the PDO database interface. So, if that happens, we're going to say connection error. And we're going to print out the message. But if it works, let's just for now echo connection successful. So let's test it out. We should be able to just refresh this page. And ta-da! So we see we have connections successful. It is successfully connected to our database and logged in. This is very good. This means it's working. If, say, you have a typo somewhere, like you left out a letter in your password or whatnot, 
you're gonna see an error something like this. So connection error, SQL state, whatever, access denied for user using password. Yes, this means that either your username was wrong or your password was wrong. Say, so that would be something to double check. Say I have a typo in my domain name, you would see something like this, unknown database, whatever your database name is. So you would want to correct that. Um, say you got the server address wrong. Um, it's going to take a little while actually to connect because the server is going to try and find um, something at that IP. But eventually you're going to get an error that looks like this. No connection could be made because target machine refused it. Or you're going to get something like no connection could be made because target machine not found. This means that your address for your server is wrong. So that would be something to double check. But if you've got all those correct, you should see connection successful. And since our connection is successful, then we want to just get rid of that so that the user doesn't see it. And so there we go. I'm going to move the um, connection variable up here just so that when it gets defined in here it's accessible globally. So there we go. We've got our database connection set up. Now we can set up the table. So there are two ways to create tables in MySQL. You can either do it from the PHP MyAdmin interface and go through the GUI and set up your tables there, which works fine. The only downside to that is if someone else deploys your application to use it, they also have to do that. And so it can be a kind of a pain to try and figure out, um, figure out like what database settings need to be and make sure that they're the same across everybody who's using it. And so the solution that I will be showing you how to use today. So we're not going to go through setting it up in PHP My Admin. The way we're going to look at it today is we're going to create a one-time run file. A file that gets executed only once, then it should be deleted. That um, sets up your database tables for you. So in this file, we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it run once. So this should only be run once. So here we're going to have a variable. We're going to set allow run true. So the way this works is when you finish your application, you're going to set this to false. That way, if a user navigates to run once, it won't run. It won't work. It won't let them do it. The when it comes time to set it up, the administrator will come in here, set this allow run to be true navigate to this page one time, then they'll come here, set it to false. That way it can only be run when this is set to true, and that can only be set to true from the server. So then we need a great big if, so if allow run. So all of our code needs to go in here. So if allow run, then we need our database info. So we have our database connection. We're connected to the database. Now we need to set up our tables. So I'm going to make a comment saying this is where we set up the newsletter table. So we're going to have a string of SQL. So the way PDO works with SQL is you have a string of SQL command. So SQL, um, MySQL, is a lot like a command processor. It takes a set of commands in a predictable function fashion and it can execute those. And that's how it sets up uh, databases, tables, entries. That's how PHP MyAdmin works. PHP MyAdmin does, doesn't do anything differently than we are going to. It just already knows what all of the commands are. And so we can just use the GUI to interface with it. So here we're going to be writing our own commands. So we're going to store the SQL command in a variable called SQL. And then in here, we're going to have a couple of commands. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create table people. So now we're going to define the individual columns. So the first column is our ID column 
it's of type int and then in that int we have the length so six unsigned is an attribute um, which just has something to do with the inner workings of having an auto incrementing ID which just sets itself then we have auto no auto increment which just means that every time something's created it's going to go up by one we don't have to set it this just means that the ID the ID sets itself and then primary key so this means that it is the way the database columns are automatically sorted or the entries our next column first is of type varchar which basically is just um, mixed alphanum alphanumerics um, so it's a max length 30 and is not null then we have our last last name also length 30 also not null then we have our email which is the type varchar max length 50 also not null then we've got the registration date which will just take a timestamp of the current whenever this record is created so there we go um, that is our table command so if you were to take this command and copy paste it into a MySQL prompt on your server you would understand this because it's basically the same thing we're just running it through PDO so now that we've got our SQL command we use our connection variable which we set up there and we're going to execute the SQL so this will create the table so before we execute the SQL again we want to put it in a try catch um, structure that way if it does for some reason fail or we have a syntax error it tells us why there we go so now we're ready to try executing this so in our web browser, we're going to navigate to run once.php, and there we go. So we didn't get an error, which is a good sign. So now we should be able to click on our newsletter, and we should see a table. Looky there. So table people. There we go. So if we click structure, we see we have our five columns, our registration date, our email, our last name, our first name, and then our auto incrementing ID. So there we go. So the last thing to do is set allow run to false. That way this can't be run again. That way it doesn't mess anything up. And then we'll just set an error message here. So echo error only runnable So now if we try and run this, we're going to get an error. There we go. So we have our table set up. So now the next thing we need to do is set up our application in such a way that it can insert the entries of data into the database. So this is going to go in our index.php. We have the handler function. So this function is called um, once the data has been sterilized and it's verified that it is correct. So this is where we're going to need to store the data at. So we're going to again do this with an SQL command. Now the SQL command to store data 
is insert. The insert command means we're inserting new data into the database. So insert into, and then the database name, people. Then the structure. So the way, yeah, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type out this whole command, then I'll, then I'll explain the structure. So All right, there we go. So let's take a look at this, shall we? So the structure of this SQL command is fairly basic. Um, we've got the initial command, insert, that's telling us what we're doing. So we're inserting data. We're inserting data into the database named people. So we created this database earlier, just a second ago. And then it we define the structure. So in my SQL commands, the structure can change you don't have to um, you don't have to have them in the same order every time so in here you're telling P, uh, MySQL what order what columns the values you're defining correspond to and then you say values and then you actually give it the things that it's going to set so even though we created five columns two of the columns ID and registration date are automatically set so when we create this it's going to set the ID automatically and it's going to set the timestamps automatically so we don't need to do that we just need to provide the first name the last name and the email so there is our SQL command string so then like earlier we need a try catch so we're gonna try and execute This SQL bit ah, and we're gonna need the database connection pass to this so down here we're gonna pass it so what I just did is that CONN connection variable that we set up here wasn't available inside this handler function because it's in a different scope so what I did is I came down here where we call the handler function so if you remember where we sanitize and verify our data and make sure that it, it all conforms to what we um, what we need it to be once that all is done successfully then we just call this handler function and we pass it the first name the last name and the email I just added the connection on the end so I passed the handler function the connection from up here and then up here I just made it a requirement so we just pass the connection through so we're going to try and execute the SQL so we're going to catch PDO exceptions we're going to echo Oops. and we're going to print out the error message if there is one so there we go then we still want to redirect them to the uh, thank you page so here we go let's uh, whoops let's test it out shall we I'm pushing all sorts of wrong buttons today there we go so here let's just try it out Alright, so we didn't get an error. Let's go to PHP my admin and we can take a look here. And here we go, success. So we have our IDE automatically set. We've got our first name, our last name, and our email address, and then the registration date and timestamp when this was submitted. So there we go. Uh, we have successfully set up our database, created a table, and set up our application to automatically store um, 
store variables and values and form submissions into that database. So that's what we're going to take a look at in this episode. In the next episode, we'll look at setting up a page that can retrieve um, entries from the database. So we'll set up sort of an, an admin panel where it can list out a table, where it can list out um, all of the people that have signed up, and we'll look at how to sort through and search for specific entries and stuff in that video. Okay guys, thanks for watching episode 6 in my PHP development tutorial series. As usual, if you had any problems um, or questions or you just needed help with something, I'll be down in the comments below. Be sure to let me know. Or if you just wanted to show off something you built, I'd love to see it down there. Um, as always, be sure to connect with me um, on Twitter, on my blog, via email, on my website, uh, Google+. Plus. Uh, links to do all that stuff are down in the video description. Uh, be sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode in this series where we're going to take a look at re actually retrieving the data out of the database. And as always, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.